Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussain TV, and uh, we are in another segment of Morning Baraka. We hope that you've enjoyed your time so far. Um, it's going to get much more interesting uh, as we kind of delve into the respiratory system, um, specifically the lungs and um, the, the anatomy of the lungs and the diseases associated with the lungs and so Did on you? and so forth. I don't want to get technical. Yeah. Did but you know there was so much to it? No, 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 no. no. So I just thought it was just these two pieces function, of muscle yeah. and then they... they air in and then air goes out and then there's something to do with CO2 yeah, and then so and oxygen and whatever but turns out there's a lot more yeah. there's a lot more to it and um, there's still a lot more so yeah. please do keep um, joining us for yeah. these segments yeah. um, and we'd like to welcome of course who Ali uh, we're welcoming uh, as always uh, Dr. Sayyid Yasser Madani to, to the show our resident expert in this field we're privileged and are actually honored to have you here Pleasure. so thank you so much uh, we appreciate that of course when it comes to your 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 line of work it's it's very hectic um, yes, so finding absolutely. that time to come to be with us, uh, to, to be with us is it's uh, it's great to have you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, um, thank of you course, so much. Alaikum. 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 Um, so yeah, as we mentioned uh, t today, we're we're really focusing on a, a condition that is known to a lot of people, mm. um, but maybe you know we kind of want to have a bit more of an insight into the ins and outs of of, of asthma. Mm. Um, a lot of kids kind of develop this asthma, mm. we kind of just want to debunk some of the myths around uh, asthma and kind of mm. um, focus on, on, on a couple of areas within this to, to help people manage um, the condition, and what to do, what not to do. So um, yeah, so for those who don't know, what, what is asthma? Sorry. So if our viewers remember, um, when we talked about the anatomy of the lungs, we talked about tubes as being part of the lungs mm. and that lead to the air sacs and the tissue around the air sacs. So asthma is an airway disorder. It's, the, it's a problem with the tubes um, in the lungs. Um, pe people who have asthma, their, their airways are sensitive, sensitive to certain environmental triggers mm. um, and, and other triggers, um, which others without asthma would not react to in the same way. Right. Oh. So those triggers can include pollen. It All can right. include dusts. It can include smoke or cigarette smoke. It can include viruses. So having a common cold in you and I often will not cause any problems. We'll just have a common cold and it goes. With an asthmatic, they're more prone for that common cold to actually exacerbate their asthma and cause an asthma attack, attack make yeah. their asthma worse, mm. asthma symptoms worse. Um, heightened emotions can make uh, asthma worse as well. Um, if we have time, we can talk briefly about the mechanism of that. Uh, laughter oh, right. sometimes can really? actually exacerbate asthma symptoms. Goodness. Um, uh, because if you imagine when you're laughing a lot, yeah. you're actually breathing through the mouth rather than through the nose. And mm. breathing through the mouth doesn't humidify the air. Right. Whereas breathing through the nose for... for, for, for um, the, I mean, we were created to breathe through the nose, mm. essentially. Mouth breathing is not normal. We we're actually created to breathe through the nose. And the nose has a mechanism by which it humidifies the air. Because yeah. the air is not humidified from the outside. Okay. And that sharp air that's not humidified, it's dry, goes down in the lungs wow. and can, can make asthma worse. Mm. Exercise. So some people have exercise-induced asthma or just those that have as ordinary asthma. Um, any exercise can potentially bring on asthma symptoms because you're, you know, you're playing mm. football, you're running, etc. You're breathing in harsh, cold, dry yeah. air that can exacerbate the asthma. So lots of different triggers. Um, what happens in the body, actually, if, again, we've got a diagram for the viewers. Uh, can you please bring that diagram up. There we go. So, actually, we've got uh, that, that round structure, which is the airway. Mm -hmm. Around it is the airway wall. And you can see it's nice and thin, the red muscle, that smooth muscle that we're talking about. And the very thin membrane within the lumen, within the inside of the airway, is called the, that, that wall of the airway. Um, and so the inner passage, the lumen, is very patent, it's wide, it's open, mm. people can breathe. That's a normal airway. Mm. In asthma, if we can please bring on the second diagram, what happens is the smooth muscle contracts, oh, wow. it wow. becomes tightened, uh, and as it becomes yeah. tightened, it becomes thicker and takes up more from the inside of the, the inner passage. Uh, the, thinner, the thin membrane, the, the blue bigger. part, becomes thicker as well because it becomes inflamed and also that then produces mucus and secretions within into the airway so you can see how much the caliber or the patency of the airway has reduced all right so that's why it becomes difficult to breathe 
and the symptoms of asthma are difficulty breathing or breathlessness or shortness of breath, tightness of that the chest, yeah, really mm. tightness of the chest because mm. of because of what's happening. Mm. The chest becomes tight. So it's not the heart problems, it's actually mm. the airways becoming tighter, causing chest tightness. And wheeze, which is a noise when people breathe out. There's difficulty in breathing out in asthma. Yeah. So, mm. so there's what we call air trapping. Air is trapped in the lungs because it's difficult to breathe out mm. because the airways have become tight. And cough, those are the predominant four symptoms of asthma. Can I quickly ask you, so just looking at that, it's, you know, visualising what happens to asthmatics. And obviously, I don't know if you know anybody, Ali, that has it. You know, we have children in our family that have it. Um, and one, I think one of my nephews has a lot of, um, sort of allergies and things like this. So to see a child go through, you know, the whole struggling, that's actually quite informative to know that's what happens to them. Mm. In our earlier programmes, you mentioned about sort of the, the, the um, physiology of the lungs. Um, so you're saying airways, are they the main parts that go into the lung, that, that, that those muscles, or are they going into the sort of the smaller, you know, as it branches out? Are, are these? Avi yeah. Avi so, alveoli? Yeah, so, so the alveoli, yeah. yes. Alveoli. I'm, I'm impressed <laughs> yeah. that you remember the alveoli. So alveoli are the air sacs. So yeah. asthma doesn't really affect the alveoli. Okay. It's a, it's trachea. Effect, it's affecting not so much the trachea. Trachea is the main windpipe, yeah. but actually the smaller, slightly right. smaller airways. So, okay. bron so not bronchi, oh. but even smaller than that, oh, wow. mm. okay. start getting uh, smaller okay. and, and constricted. Mm. So asthma affects the medium to small airways. Right. Um, okay. uh, uh, and they get tighter and give rise to these symptoms. Mm. Um, now, things to watch out for for asthmatics. Uh, it's really important f for them to control their asthma and to prevent their asthma getting worse because if they don't control their asthma, it can culminate into an asthma attack or exacerbation, as yeah. we call it, an asthma attack. That's what you want to prevent because there's a lot of morbidity and mortality associated with asthma really? attacks. Some people do die in the UK. Who is more prone to get it? Children? Uh, um, do they develop as children or can adults get it later in life? Who's sort of more...? So. So, some people have asthma in childhood. Okay. All right. And some of those people, they grow out of their asthma and it yeah. never comes back. Mm. Okay. Some of them grow out of their asthma, but it comes back later in adult life. Some of them don't grow out of their asthma and it stays for the rest of their life. Okay. Right. Um, it's difficult to predict what category the child is going to be in. Yeah. Um, that type of asthma, which starts in childhood often, is called atopic asthma. Okay. Asthma, we think of asthma more now as a syndrome rather than as a, as a, as a specific disease entity. There's different types of asthma. I don't want to get too, too much into this because it's uh, slightly a bit more technical. Yeah. But one of those disease entities, or as we describe them medically as phenotypes, is atopic asthma, which means allergic asthma. So these people are often have hay fever, eczema, food allergies, etc. Okay. They're, they're much more prone to allergies. And asthma can be atopic, can be uh, allergic in, a, in that way as well. Um, and people who have atopic asthma are actually prone to pollen, the pollen seasons, mm. hay fever, their asthma can get worse. So, but it's also possible for people to have never had asthma as a child and actually develop late onset or adult onset Okay. asthma later in life, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, wow. 70s. It's possible even in, 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 in elderly people to develop asthma. Often that's not atopic asthma. Yeah. Um, uh, the treatment is by and large the same, but I think in, in several years down, time, down, down, down the line, we will hopefully have more personalized medicine by which we can actually tailor treatment to the different types of asthma yeah. Yeah. that people have. Yeah. So again, so that's a bit out, outside the scope of this discussion. So we've seen, you know, one of the, what happens to the actual um, body um, with a person that has asthma. And, and you mentioned also sort of uh, the asthma attack as well. Mm. It seems to be quite a frightening situation. Mm. Um, how so this is going to be quite quite relevant to, to kind of parents and even mm. uh, to, mm. to, to the younger children as well who, who have asthma. How do you recognize and manage Very good question. an asthma attack? Very good question. So um, the symptoms we mentioned, those are the four main symptoms. Cough, often dry cough, unless someone has an infection, but generally it's a dry cough with asthma. Um, wheeze, chest tightness, breathlessness. If people are having these symptoms in the day, if people are waking up, from these symptoms at night. If 
um, these symptoms are interfering with people's everyday activities, daily activities such that they're losing time of work, losing time of school, mm. or if it's affecting their, you know, going shopping or whatever, mm. you know, their chores, or if they're using their reliever inhaler, we need to speak about the two types of inhaler later, mm. inshallah. Uh, the reliever inhaler, if they're using that, their emergency inhaler, more than three times or three times or more a week, then their asthma is not well controlled. Mm. So that's the thing that they need to know. Their asthma is not well controlled and they need to get on top of their asthma because if they don't, then they will develop an asthma attack. Now, generally speaking, the asthma attack doesn't happen just like that. Yeah. It's a culmination of several days to weeks of poor asthma control oh. that then develops into an asthma attack. Is, so it, is it is an attack, sorry, is that sort of like a, a panic? Or no, so, uh, so an asthma attack is when they have very acute onset of symptoms, these same symptoms that I mentioned, which are worse. Mm. All right, so that the, the way, in answer to your question, the way we recognize um, poor asthma control is this. Mm -hmm. um, and actually when these asthma symptoms get acutely very worse, yeah. which don't normally get very worse just like that. Like that right. They get worse over a period of poor asthma control, but people either have not managed the, as poor, the poor asthma control yeah. and have just buried it under the carpet and not paid attention to it, or they've just not recognized their asthma is yeah. poor and they think, oh, the coughing is just part of yeah. me being asthma. asthmatic. Yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. you shouldn't be having symptoms. Mm. Your asthma is not well controlled if you are having symptoms. Mm. So you need to get on top of it. So the asthma attack happen, happens much more acutely. It can be life-threatening. It can be very severe. Um, there's a degree of severity, as with everything, mild to moderate to you know, severe, etc., to life-threatening, to near-fatal. You know, those are the... The, the degrees of severity and they all have different definitions medically uh, and criteria. But then another thing in addition to symptoms that asthmatics often use is uh, something called a peak flow meter, which is a piece of plastic thing. It has a dial on it, uh. really important for every asthmatic to have one at home. Mm. And the GP or the hospital will often give patients a peak flow meter. And even if they don't, asthmatics can go to the pharmacy and buy one. It's really, really important that every asthmatic has one. Not only that, it's important for every asthmatic to know what their normal is. So what their normal peak flow when they blow mm. is um, when they're well. Mm. To compare it to when they're unwell. Yeah. Okay? And to see the degree of disturbance, the disparity. Yeah. If they don't know what their normal is, then they, there's a way of knowing. There's a table, and it's on the internet. You can know by knowing what your height is, what your gender is, and what your age is, to work out what, no, what, sh what should be normal for you. Mm. So, for example, um, if you know your normal is 500, that's good. You need to put that in the back of your mind or write it down somewhere. Mm. And when your asthma control is getting worse, you're having these symptoms, you're waking up at night because of cough or wheeze. And classically, poor asthma control, um, people have asthma symptoms late at night mm. Mm. and first thing in the morning. And then they're better during the day. That's mm. classic. And when that's the case, you've got this variation. Again, your asthma is not well controlled. When you see these signs of poorly controlled asthma, do your peak flow. Yeah. Do your peak flow and compare what your number is to what it should be. If it is a number that's not, you know, if it's, a, for example, 200, if you yeah. mentioned, is that, is that like an alarming figure? What, what kind of figure so, do you... Do yeah, you so it depends what their normal should be. Yeah. No, I'm saying so is... If their normal is 500 yeah. and they're blowing 200, that's really bad. That's really that's bad. That's less than 50%. So every asthmatic should have an, a written asthma action plan. Mm. All right? So there was a review done several years ago, not many years ago actually, um, uh, it was called the National Review of Asthma Deaths and RAD. Mm. And it looked at all the people that died in asthma in a particular time period, and it was only recently published in the last, last few years, um, and showed you know, what are the things that could have been done to prevent these deaths. Mm. And one of the things was you know, everyone should have a written asthma action plan. You know, take a photo of it, put it on your phone, etc. You I, either do it with your GP or your your nurse at the GP practice or the hospital if you're under a specialist in hospital. Um, and it will tell you, if your asthma is well controlled, just keep taking your medications. Mm. You're in the green zone. Yeah. If you're in the amber zone or yellow zone, then your asthma is not well controlled and you probably need to increase your, your preventer inhaler. Mm. And if you're in the red zone, you probably need to see a doctor there and then on that same day, either your GP, and if you can't, you go to A&E. Mm. So if you blow, if you blew 200 and, and your normal is 500. 500, then that's less than 50%, that's in the red zone. Wow. If you're between 50 to 75%, you're probably in the amber zone, okay. in which case you need to increase your normal therapies or get a course of 
steroid tablets. Mm. You probably at that point still can manage, but if you're still getting worse, then you need to go to see someone. Okay. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that does. If we if yeah. we have time to talk about the two inhalers, do we Just have time? Cool, very quickly. Yeah, I think very we're less than two time. inhalers. One is a preventer and one yeah. is a reliever. The reliever often is a blue inhaler, salbutamol. It's quick acting. If you're requiring three puffs or more a week, then your asthma is not well controlled. You need to see your GP. Preventer, you should always use your preventer inhaler, even when you're well, because it's mm. preventing you from being unwell. Okay. And that often contains a steroid, and it's normally you want uh, normally twice a day. For some inhalers, it's once a day. Mm. And that keeps you well. You should always take your preventer inhaler. And because it's a steroid, you need to gargle and rinse your mouth afterwards to prevent thrush. Right. And the relieve inhaler is your for emergencies of when you have symptoms. So Fantastic. do the gargling after every puff? After the steroid inhaler. Oh, after, okay. yeah, every. Okay. Yeah. And you need to, yeah. if you're on inhalers, which normally most asthmatics are, you should get your inhaler technique checked by either your chemist or, the, or your practice nurse because so many people do not, are not using their asthma inhalers correctly. It's not as simple as just taking a tablet, mm. you which know, you know will go to your stomach. Yeah. You have to have a correct technique, and so many people that I see in hospital do not use it correctly. But do you know, I mean, no criticism to GPs, obviously they have time limits, but I, you know, I've been given um, asthma in the, par um, the inhaler in the past, and you don't get this information from mm. the GP. Um, it's very rare, so it's actually quite informative, and I hope wow. yeah. for our uh, um, viewers as well, perhaps themselves or family that may suffer it, um, Again, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, if we did use it properly, then you'd probably see less of us in your clinics. Um, but thank you. God bless you. Um, and show you have a blessed day. Yeah. And um, we'll see you next time. Sure. More hot topics to talk about the lung. Wow. wow. I'm actually quite amazed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely a fascinating, um, a fascinating topic. Uh, and we look forward to more from... Uh, Dr. Sayed Yasser Badani. Thank you so much for your time. Sure, really appreciate no it. Thank so you. I think we're now going yep. moving to um, Sayed Ali uh, Nawab. So stay tuned.